Hi again. Last video of this uh, series on model selection. In this one we're going to look at um, a very nice powerful tool for model selection and averaging. In fact it's so powerful this tool that I liken it a bit to the, the super laser of the Death Star. And um, forgive me for, for kind of metaphorically calling you toddlers but giving this tool to you, this, this super laser to you, it's a bit like giving the Death Star to a, a toddler to play with. Um, in fact, you now I say giving me this tool to play with, it's also a bit like doing that, uh, giving a very, very powerful, flexible tool to someone who knows how to press the button to turn it on, um, and that's about it. So, you know, it's, um, it's pretty cool to look at, um, but we have to be very, very careful when we actually use it in anger. All right, so let's get to it in R. Here we just were at the end of the last video. We'll make some space here. And the package that this tool is in, let's put it right up at the top as usual. Library, GL Multi it's called. Now remember, uh, this will work when I run it. It's working. However, when uh, you if you try and do that straight off, it probably won't work. You need to go to Packages, Install, and then GL Multi just here. If I was going to do it, GL Mul, there it is. And then I've pressed Install. I'm not going to because I've already installed it. All right, it's a good idea to put all of the packages up the top here. Um, Okay, so now let's do um, package GL multi model selection the death star. All right, it's pretty, um, it's a little bit complicated actually. Um, we'll call the output of this uh, multi one. And the function is called glmulti. It's the same name as the package itself. And what we need to do, uh, what we need to give it first is that full model up here. We'll just copy all of this and then paste it here. All right, there's a few other things we need to give glmulti. Level, we put equals one. This tells GLMulti to only search through the main effects. Do not do interaction terms. Uh, if we put two there, it would do the uh, two-way interactions. There are a lot of those, um, so it'll take my computer too long for the purposes of this, of this video to search through them all. Um, you can imagine that it can easily become very computationally intensive to search through all of the possible two-way interactions, three-way interactions, and so on and so on and so on. Um, actually, GL Multi is pretty clever, and when it knows that it's searching through a lot of different models, it can do so in quite a smart way. Not not an exhaustive search, but a, a smarter search. All right, the next thing that we give it is in fact the search method. We put H, which means exhaustive search. So it's actually going to look at every possible combination of those explanatory variables um, that we've given it. Next thing we give it is criteria. This um, criteria for judging models. We'll use AICC again. The next thing is conf set size. We'll set that as, let's set it as, well, let's set it as 10 actually, no, 15, no, 10. Be decisive, Owen. Now that's the number of uh, models we'll ask it to keep. The best 10 models it's going to, to find now. If we change that to 20, it would be the best 20 models. Or if we change it to one, it would be the best model. Um, good, now we do plotty equals false. We don't want it to do any plots as it goes along. And report equals false. Let's not have it spitting out lots of reporting as it goes along. We give it the fit function. And in this case, that's LM. So we're doing a linear model here. You see, we didn't put LM here, up here. 
So we have to do it somewhere else, and that's where we do it, because we want it to do a linear model. That means actually you can use this function for nonlinear models, which is, uh, sorry, you can use this for generalized linear models, which are coming later in the course. Now just remember that GL multi can be used for models other than linear models. And um, that's it actually. Let's get rid of that. That's it. Um, I'm going to run this line and then pause the video because I think it's going to take a little while to run. Just be aware of that when you uh, come to run it. Yeah, there we go. I'll pause the video and then um, come back when it's finished. There it is. We've got the greater than sign down here. So it's finished. All right, what's it done is the question. Oh, by the way, that took about, I think it took about 30 seconds on my computer. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing that we can do is print, oops, print multi one. Get a little report of what it got up to in those 30 seconds. So it's saying it did a GL multi analysis. The method was exhaustive. Fitting was with a linear model. The information criteria used was AICC. It was done at level level one. Uh, marginality was false. I'm not sure what that means actually. It got the uh, from the best the ten best models. The best IC information criteria was one thousand four hundred fifty nine. <laughs> Look at all of the decimal places it reports. That's a bit crazy. <clears throat> and the best model is this one. Age, weight, neck, abdomen, thigh, forearm, and wrist. And actually, that is the same model as we were finding before. So uh, that's great. Here's the evidence weight for that model. That's um, out of um, one. And the worst information criteria of those 10 models is 1,461. It's only about two units different from the best model. So the range of the 10 best models actually has a, almost the same information criteria. They're all very, very similar. You can see nine of the models re reach this 95% of the evidence weight. Um, so they're all kind of contributing towards that evidence weight, nine of them. Um, <clears throat> it would be very different if it was five of them that contribute towards 95%, for example. I would say that five of the models are, are really good and the others aren't so good. Um, so that's, that's some summary of what it's done. We can also do some graphs. Now the plot function in R is very, um, it can handle lots of different types of out, uh, object that we give it. Uh, in this case, we're giving it that oh, multi one object. And with type S, we're asking it to give us the model averaged importance of terms. So actually wrist, forearm, abdomen, weight, and age are all very important in this model. Neck and thigh uh, are pretty important. And then this is just reference line at point 0.8 and so on and so on. And this is averaged across all 10 models. That's what it means by model averaging. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, model averaged importance of terms. So it's kind of saying like across all of the models, what is the importance of those terms? Okay, the next plot we can make is multi one and type equals p in this case. This gives us the information criteria profile. It's just simply the information criteria of these models. Um, is the best model, is the worst model. As you can see, that's quite a jump here. And then, it, and then it levels off around here. So you can see that information criteria. It looks like there's a big difference here. However, if you actually look at the numbers here, it goes from 1,460 up to about 1,461.5. So it's only about 1.5 units. And often people are looking at models as being particularly different in how good they are, uh, greater than two units of AIC. So these are all within that range of being pretty good models. Plot. Uh, the next one, multi one type equals W. And here we get this profile of model weights. And I've, I've mentioned model weights or the weighting um, various times. 
I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it's kind of like how good the model is relative to the other ones. I think all these numbers together add up to one. Uh, so model one has the greatest weight. Here's the next weight and here's the next. Actually, you can see this is almost um, uh, reciprocal of the, um, the opposite of that AIC pattern. It might even be that. So um, they're the weights. I think they're the weights. I think they're the weights that are used when the model averaging is done. So when one is calculating a parameter value, an average parameter value, which I'll show you in a second, um, then um, the parameter value of a particular model is multiplied by its weight and then um, they are averaged. Those weighted parameter values are averaged. Let's get some of those. Um, we can just do COF, as usual, multi one. And here we get the weighted model average, weighted parameter estimates. So there's height, parameter estimate for height, ankle, bicep, so on and 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 so on. Now you'll see that this list of parameters is there's more of them than are in the best model. And that's remember, that's because it's it's the model averaging done across the 10 best models. And that wrist actually appears in, um, sorry, not wrist, let's find one that's an ankle, for example. That doesn't, in, in, that's not in the best model, but it is a parameter in one of the other um, nine models <coughs> that we've got. And that's why it's showing up in this table uh, you see it's got relatively low importance that's because it's not present in all of the models actually you can see the number of models here nb models number of models that these parameters appear in so height only appears in one of the 10 um, models and all of these appear in all 10 of those models so that is um, a table of estimates. I'm not going to go into what everything means in this table um, because, uh, well, largely because I don't know actually. It's good to say when one doesn't know something. Um, unconditional variance, number of models, importance, and alpha is 0 0.05. Uh, so, um, like I said before, if you wanted to do this and you needed to do this in some research, it'd be really important to learn more about it. Um, this is just a fly over the subject, like I said, and giving you some relatively dangerous tools. Um, just one more thing before we go on. You can also use the predict function with a set of models. Just like we use predict with a linear model, a single linear model, we can run predict. And um, here we get the predicted values, the fitted values. Um, given that model averaging, the model averaged parameter values. That's a quite powerful thing to be able to do. Okie dokie. So that's um, model selection, model averaging, the manual way using um, Step AIC and then GL Multi. Lots of tools there, very powerful. Um, we've got a model now, we've got one model that's the best, and also we've got a set of models that we can average over. The next thing to do if we were really doing this um, for research purposes because we wanted to predict body fat from these variables is actually go out and collect a new data set, a brand new data set, and use the model that we've created to predict the values of body fat in that new data set. Um, be really important to do that and we might actually find that um, we've got a few too many parameters in for the best possible prediction. Okay um, that's all for now thank you very much.